Today in Beijing, we're not going sightseeing, we're not having pecking duck, well, maybe later. We're going beer tasting. So the most popular beers in China are without a doubt snow beer and Qingtao. But in the last few years, craft beer has really started to make its mark in Beijing. A lot of craft beeries and beer bars have opened up that serve some distinct Beijing flavors. And uh, today we're going to hit up Beijing's four most popular craft beeries to see what's distinct about them and possibly or probably get a little tipsy. So I'm at Arrow Factory Brewing, and this brewery started in a tiny shack in one of the city's hutongs, but now they've grown into a full brew pub where they brew all their beers right here on site. This is the Lovin' Spoonful. Very fruity. Is this even beer? It tastes like juice. That's like the passion mango. fruit. Mango. Oh, passion fruit. Passion fruit, yeah. Oops. So those are the esters. So that's another byproduct of the fermentation. How we uh, ferment the beer can control the level of those flavors in the beer yeah. by using lactose sugar, because lactose sugar does not ferment. It remains sweet in the beer, so you get a kind of fuller body with slight sweet overtones. Then we use fresh passion fruit yes. in the brewing process. This is my first time having such a fruity beer. Yeah. I think it's a new favorite. So we're going to go slightly stronger. Oh, okay. If you don't mind. This is a double IPA, which basically means it's strong, has lots of hops. Kind of a similar smell to the previous yeah, passion but that, fruit Yeah, but this one. one has no fruit added. This is just oh. hops. Oh yes, it is strong. I can taste it. But yeah, the fruitiness kind of... Covers it up. It yeah. covers it up, It's a bit yeah. dangerous, you see, which is why it's called the Seeing Double. It's good that you put it in the name so you kind of warn people. It is, yeah. <laughs> We have one more special beer. It's only 300 bottles in the world, but now there's going to be 299. <laughs> this is called Barley Wine. We made this beer in October 2016. So it's been aging in whiskey barrels. You don't need much of this, I have to say. It's quite lethal. Again, so this is like about 13% alcohol. Yeah, I can, I can feel it. I can taste it. <laughs> I can taste it, I can feel it. <laughs> It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> Cheers. You too, thank you. I wish you good luck with the rest of your beer journeys. Thank you. We're at Great Leap Brewing, which has different locations scattered around Beijing, and each of the locations serve a different kind of pub food. What's great about Great Leap, though, is that they have a massive selection of beers they brew themselves. Why don't I give you one of our best sellers? It's a beer is called Honey Ma, and our original recipe has honey from Confucius' hometown in Shandong province, okay. and peppercorn from Sichuan. Well, cheers. Cheers. Very malty. Yeah. It's kind of a bitter aftertaste, but you yeah. kind of want to keep going for more. I really like it. <laughs> My husband and I used to work in like high salary jobs, and we started falling in love with beer and wanted to make beer full time. And that's the great leap forward. Yeah, that was a, a great leap <laughs> for us. Yeah. This is our house stout. Stout. Um, yeah. I don't think I've ever had a stout before, so yeah? first experience here. Give it a shot. Cheers. Cheers. Oh wow! It smells like coffee and chocolate and when you taste it, yeah. you're surprised by the alcoholic taste that can come with coffee and chocolate. It's really, really interesting. This one's named after uh, my father. That's why it's called Little the Brave. It is a beer that we're very proud of to a point that I have a tattoo on my arm with this beer. That's really nice. Uh, it's rich, it's full of characters, and it's also bold, right? It's something yeah. that best represented his character, so. It's definitely a taste that yeah. you will remember. Yeah. So this beer is a wall builder stout that we barrel aged. This is more of like a whiskey flavor to it. Thank you. Cheers. We uh, also named this beer the Wall Builder because our like barrel program is under the Great Wall. Here's to the builders of the wall. I can definitely taste the whiskey in there. Yeah, yeah. No. It's like two alcohols in one. Why not? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your beers and all the amazing backstories. Thank you for coming to Great Leap. So we're at Slow Boat Brewery and these guys didn't start in the heart of Beijing like many other craft breweries. Instead, they set up shop high within the Beijing hills. And now they've got this massive three-story brew pub in San Li Twin where they tap you beers straight from the tank. All of our names are nautically themed. Our best seller is uh, called the Monkey's Fist IPA. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh, it smells really fruity. So what you should be tasting right now is a kind of a blast of mango and passion fruit. Mm. The, the mango flavor is actually not from mango, but from the hops. 
This one's called the Beet Wave Sour. Beet? Beet. Like the vegetable. It's, it's made of beets. Oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> this one is a kettle sour, which yeah. means that we bring down the acidity a bit so that you have tartness on the tongue, but then you get the sweetness from the beet. I'm really nervous about this yeah. one. Cheers. Try it. Whoa. This is weird because I normally don't eat beets, but this one I really don't mind it, and I feel like I'm drinking a vegetable juice with like a kick. It's like I'm being healthy, but <laughs> low key, not really. <laughs> but it's really cool. So the last one that we're gonna try is one that actually hasn't come out of the tanks yet, so we don't have it on the menu yet. It's a 14% beer, so it's very strong. Because it, it's in the tanks, we had to actually put it in cans just to get it to you. Cheers. No I operating heavy machinery after this. <laughs> Whoa, coffee. Am I right? Please you say are, I'm right. You're oh, thank spot goodness. On. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of a whiskey, oaky taste to it because we, we used oak chips in the brew, so. I can't believe this is 14%. I just feel like I'm drinking coffee with maybe a few drips of whiskey. Well, again, it's all about balance. Well, cheers again. And thank cheers. you so much for sharing your beers with me. It's been great. Thank you for coming. Thank I, you. I know you're in a rush, uh, so we prepared one of, the, one of our canned beers. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. When you talk about beer in Beijing, it's impossible to go past Jing A Brewery. They're all about capturing the essence of Beijing in a glass of beer, which calls for some pretty unique flavors. So the first beer we're gonna try is our Koji Red Ale. Koji is a red fermented rice, so it's used a lot in southern Chinese cooking. So if you had uh, like a cha chow. You mean barbecue meat? Cha -chow. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So the color from that actually comes from the Koji Red Rice, oh, which is why you get a really kind of brilliant red. Cheers. Cheers, yeah. So there's some really interesting ingredients in this beer. Is there any citrus? There's a little bit of citrus from the hop. Ginger root in there. Oh yes, I can taste ginger. The last one's wasabi. Wasabi? Wasabi root is in there as well. There's wasabi in this? Yeah. I, I never thought you could put wasabi in a beer. That's really interesting. This one really works together. Yeah, thanks. So the next beer I have is Airpocalypse. And it's an ode to Beijing. It's basically air pollution. Okay. Uh, yeah, so if the air pollution is over 200, we give a discount on the beer. And if it hits 1,000 AQI outside, it's free. Does it ever hit that? It hasn't hit 1,000 AQI yet, but I think if it ever does, everyone in the city deserves free beer. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Surprisingly not as strong as I thought it would be, right. which is good and dangerous. <laughs> So the next beer is a beer we've never released yet, okay? It's an Imperial Stout, 12% alcohol, and we brewed it with a brewery out of Sweden called Stigbrigget, and we get to try right from the tank. Whoa, so what's this room? This is basically the Jing A fermentation room. So this is the VIP beer right in here? This is Black Tentacle, the beer that only a handful of people, maybe three or four people have ever tried ever. It a lot of- so rich and creamy, like a chocolate cream. Yeah. This is super interesting, like coffee, chocolate. We use two words that, to describe this beer. It's gotta be thick, it's gotta be chewy. Chewy? Chewy. Yeah, it feels kind of like I'm having like a toffee candy as well. Yeah. It's so weird, so much is happening. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your beers with me. I'm gonna head back to the bar now for some 8.8, uh, are you coming? Okay, let's do it. What a day! I just spent an entire day going from craft brewery to craft brewery. Went to Arrow Factory and I loved the fruitiness and the lightness of the beers. Great leap. Wow, the stories behind the beer names. It was really amazing that Leo shared them with me. Slow Boat was dark, atmospheric, and I really like how out there they were with the beers. I mean, a beet beer, so weird, but kind of works like a vegetable juice with an alcoholic kick. Jingye was super cozy, and the beers had so much variety. Out of all the breweries, though, I think I would go back for a Mandarin wheat at Jingye because uh, I actually had one at dinner. I think I should go off to bed now. I mean, it's late, and I should sleep in tomorrow. You know we've got to hike the Great Wall tomorrow at 6 a.m. What? 